And welcome into a Thursday edition of the Backstage Pass. Of course, always presented by our good friends over at Bangtail Whiskey and our good friends over at Hank Jr. Uh, Productions. Uh, check those guys out too at the websites you see there scrolling across the bottom of your screen here. Back with my boy in the house, Jeff McMahon, uh, Brandon Morell here on the Backstage Pass. Uh, you know, you can't do this show. It's like the Visa card. You can't li- you can't leave home without it. You can't do a backstage pass show without Jeff McMahon. Kind of hand in hand there, so that's the way that cookie rolls here back here again. <laughs> you can't I go think, anywhere. I think I think those have happened without <laughs> Jeff McMahon. But. <laughs> it's always a good thing on there too. Appreciate you guys joining us as always. If you have questions, leave them in the comment box, and we'll get to as many uh, as we can. Again, powered by uh, the Sports Guys Podcast dot com, Grand Slam of Music and Sports, and of course, here in a few weeks, we're going to catch up with my good buddy from ESPN Radio, Freddie Coleman's going to come on. We'll talk a lot about everything. Uh, national sports and, of course, uh, regional sports here in Texas. Uh, Please welcome on here as they just keep reaching out to me, and I say yes, yes, yes. Alyssa Marie uh, Kuhn joins us here on the Backstage Pass Nashville Recording Artist. How's it going? I'm great. How are you guys? <laughs> Doing very well and just uh, pleased to have you here. Of course, the new single is Put It Down, which is out there across all the uh, digital platforms, came out at the beginning of October. So I always start here with this. Anytime I have a first-time guest, uh, Tell me about everything, how this got started, uh, the love of music, and this journey that you've you've been on to uh, follow your dreams. I mean, definitely Florida. I say that. I say Nashville recording artist, but you you're, you're not uh, new to this. You've been doing this a while. But tell me about that backstory a little bit. I'm curious to hear that. So basically, since I was like at the age of two, my parents noticed that I would always be like into music, singing, and so at the age of two, um, both my mom and dad. I had just got done watching The Wizard of Oz and they both noticed that I would not stop singing like all the songs from there. <laughs> and it was like weird because I was really young and like it was surprising that I like, I guess, um, knew the songs. So mm-hmm. um, they waited a little while. And then when I turned six, they put me in classical piano lessons. So that basically got everything started with music. And then after that, I went into vocal lessons and ever since then, I've just been singing and playing music, and I love what I do. It's super fun. Now, do you are you still taking lessons now, or or have you quit now? Uh, I right now I'm only taking vocal lessons. Okay. Uh, just so I could keep up with my technique and everything for things that go on in the future and recording and everything. Right. Yeah, I took a. a I was a piano student as well. And, um, took for a number of years. And then once I got into high school and the, the piano teacher started saying, no, 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 you can't improvise. You can't be making things up as you go along. (laughs) You have to do only the classical stuff. I, that was when I was like, okay, well then I'm (laughs) done with my piano lessons and, uh, still play. But, uh, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't take after high school. Yeah. I mean, I, I sometimes get a little bored with classical piano. I don't play it as much anymore, but um, I still think that it's really fun. Um, and I love I love being able to read music too. I'm like a really, I'm a really a music nerd. I took AP music theory my freshman year of high school. So ever since then, I've just been like obsessed with music like that. <laughs> sure, sure. I love that too. And let me ask you this. I know from the music, definitely a calling and, and very good at it as, as you know, kind of henceforth the singles out there that you can download across all the platforms. And I loved them too. When you're, when your mom contacted me, I said, certainly we're going to feature her here on the uh, backstage pass. Uh, what about other artists out there that influenced this kind of this love of it beside movies and beside other things, vocal lessons, uh, other artists that kind of uh, made you pursue this career. So uh, actually there was one big main one, obviously Taylor Swift. I've been obsessed with since like a very young age. Um, but when I was little, I used to watch The Voice, and mm-hmm. I noticed a girl named Danielle Bradbury on there who was very shy and a lot like me back at the time, where she like hadn't really been like she was a shy girl and she would be like afraid of singing in front of people. And I really related to her. Plus she sang country music. And ever since I saw her on the voice and then she won, I, she basically really motivated me. And I actually got the chance to meet her a couple years ago. And you don't want to see that picture. Cause I was literally crying <laughs> <laughs> and I don't get like that when I meet fa- like uh, famous people, but that was really funny. Actually, <laughs> that's a funny story that I always tell. <laughs> well, okay, so uh, 
you know, Taylor and Danielle, um, I, I would also kind of think in that same space, you've probably got room for Kelsey Ballerini, right? Oh, yes. A right. 100%. Um, but, you know, since you've been exposed to so much more music, is there anybody that you feel like influences you that people would suggest is before your time? Maybe somebody that music that you got from your parents that early on you were like, oh, I don't really like that. But now that you understand music, that you're like, okay, now I get, you know, what she was doing. And um, I don't want to, I don't want to be that, but I can learn from that. Is there anybody like that that comes to mind? Um, I'll, I think I'll say like maybe Shania Twain. I don't think she's necessarily yeah. like mm -hmm. before my time. Right. I think, but like, uh, she's like, I guess not in like, uh, the people, well, I don't know how to explain what I'm trying to say, but she definitely is someone that I look up to. That's like a little before my generation, I guess. Right. Well, I mean, her, her active radio time was before you probably had control of the radio. Yes. You know, I mean, she's, she's certainly still viable in doing all of that, but, um, but yeah, it's so, it's so funny how, how people don't realize that the music, you know, music 40 years ago affected the people 20 years ago, affected the people 10 years ago that affected Taylor, you know, mm -hmm. that now affects you. So, um, but yeah, certainly Shania would be, would mm -hmm. be somebody to, uh, learn a lot from. Yeah. She's awesome. Let me take this a little back because I heard through the grapevine too. And this is just doing a little homework and research we do here on the show. Uh, Mom said there was a little bit of love out there for Dolly Parton. Is that correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure. Ah, oh, I can't believe that didn't. <laughs> um, I love Dolly. Ever mm -hmm. since I saw Dolly on one of the Hannah Montana episodes, another person that I really look up to, which is surprising, Miley Cyrus. Um, I. I fell in love with like Dolly Parton's music and everything. And I do a lot of her covers too. Um, so I like that too. Now, as far as the singles go, you know, you, you've been at this for a while now, even before 2019, but uh, take me back to that first uh, single. When you put out that first single songwriting kind of showcase those talents. Uh, uh, one of those days, it was of course a version out there on iTunes and then you go to oblivious in 2019. Um, what was it about those, those first two singles that kind of set the tone to, the latest one, which is, which is put it down. Well, I think one of those days it was still like me trying to find my specific uh, <clears throat> vibe, even though it's mm -hmm. still in like, I still perform that song and everything. I just, when I finally released Oblivious, I think that's where I like set um, kind of like my, the genre I kind of wanted to be in. It's all country pop, but like that was mainly like, uh, the route I was going in, um, then put it down, which I feel like is kind of similar to the same like music as Oblivious would be, but it's the same kind of vibe, I guess. Mm -hmm. I like that too. Well, that is the current single out there. Uh, put it down, came out at the beginning of October and I'm going to turn the show over to you. We talked about a few to play here, uh, for you to perform for us here on the uh, backstage pass. So again, it's all yours. And, uh, we're going to let you perform and we get off the screen and you do what you do best. <laughs> okay. Okay. So since we were just talking about put it down, um, I guess I'll play that one. All right. So this I just released on all music platforms and it, I think it just hit 20 ish thousand streams on Spotify, which is super exciting because it's only been out for like a little uh, under a month. So, mm -hmm. so this is put it down. Here we go. Yep. The sun is setting through those glass through the window pane. You're still the last thing on my mind at the end of the day. Reaching out to grab my phone, boy, I guess I should have known. Since it didn't have a lot of people thinking about me. It's 3 a.m., I'm staring at the ceiling and spinning. Oh, 
It's like hours, it's only been a few minutes I'm trying to distract myself and think about something else Then my whole world stops when it finally rings You'll never see my smile from your side of the screen Whenever your name shows up And you'll never know what's still the main house Making my heart drop You know just what to do and just what to say if I Bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle, and the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. And that's what we do each and every weekday for about 3.30 to 6. Somewhere in there, you'll have a new artist featured here on the Backstage Pass. You get presented by our good friends over at Hank Jr. Productions and, of course, uh, Bangtail uh, Whiskey. And Jeff, I had a glass of that last night, then went out to eat, had a different drink. I came back home, had another glass of Bangtail Whiskey, and so I was sleeping uh, pretty good last night with all that good uh, flavor. Again, drink responsibly, I always say out there, too. But uh, you take a load off, get you a bottle of Bangtail either at the website, bangtail.com, or, of course, uh, the Easy Liquor app is a good place to get that uh, sent right to your doorstep. And it is the holiday season. Happy holidays to everybody out there. Early Thanksgiving and, of course, Christmas just around the corner, about five or six weeks away. Uh, that's hard to believe, Jeff. We're finishing up another year here. Alyssa Marie Kuhn back with us here on the show. Um, I love that song when your mom first contacted me about everything. Uh, I just had a feel-good vibe to it. And uh, kind of give me a little backstory. Was that a right that you did by yourself? Was that something you worked with somebody on, collaborated? Uh how easy did that one come together? So I actually co-wrote that song with one of my good friends. Uh, she was originally from Florida, but she moved to Nashville. Um, and I, it was something that I was actually going through. Like I had a little crush at the time and 
whenever they wouldn't text me back fast enough or I would check my phone and they didn't text me back or they read my text but didn't answer. I would never be able to put my phone down until they finally texted me again. So I wanted to write a song about it because I know I've talked to some of my friends and they said the same thing. Like they're always getting mad at like the people they have a crush on because they never answer. So I was like, maybe if I write a song about it, people will know that other people can relate. So. <laughs> I love that one, no doubt. Again, you can check her out at Alyssa Marie Kuhn Music com for a lot of the latest uh, good stuff out there. And of course, I'm sure there's going to be merch at some point along the way if there's not already. So make sure you check that out too at the same time. Hey, take me back to this one because I know the pandemic was tough for everybody out there. Everybody struggled no matter what career it was, especially uh, if you were in a, uh, the line of music, the music industry. Uh, but tell me about how you guys kept busy with, uh, first I want to know about Country Girl. And how that one came together and then of course uh i gotta know you guys were putting out some singles there uh i guess shortly after and during this pandemic right uh yeah those two i believe country girl i think was maybe at the very beginning or right before i uh, know i gotta know was in the middle of it too um when everything originally shut down i we had no idea that that was gonna happen like i was a freshman in high school and now i'm a junior so i literally thought i was getting four extra days of spring break and then it turned out i literally had like a whole year of school online which was so horrifying like it was it was horrible it was literally horrible but um in the meantime it actually got me to work a lot on music and um have some time to process things in like a little slow break. And I was used to being very busy. Like uh, now that's starting again, where like I'm, I'm, I go to school, I come home, do my music stuff. I, over the weekend, I do gigs and everything. And I love that. I, I, I definitely took advantage of being busy before COVID, but now I know how much like I love being busy. But um, during COVID, we recorded those songs and then I decided to put them out for everybody. And I did not record those songs in Nashville, but um, mm -hmm. they were still really fun to work on and put out there. Well, let me let me ask you this, because uh, you did all the recording. We were all stuck at home all during that time. But now you're you're able to get out and perform live. You're able to do some of those songs live. Now, you just said that you're a junior in high school and um and Henry is letting us know that he's excited to see you at Old Red in Orlando. Mm -hmm. um, and I heard somewhere else that you have played or are going to play the Tin Roof, which we have a we have a Tin Roof here in Nashville. Um, what do those kind of gigs look like for you at what seventeen? Yeah, I turned seventeen in like two weeks. Right. So so how do you? How do you navigate that? What is that? I never, I was never gigging on the road uh, before I was uh, legal age. So what, how does that work for you? Um, well, do you mean like, 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 how, what do you mean? I mean, I mean, do, uh, are, are you able to run the show? Does, oh. do you have to have a parent there to get you in? Does everybody know you? Therefore they know you're going to go by the rules. So it's not a concern. How does it work for you logistically? you know, being the leader of what you're doing, but, um, but being, you know, but not having an ID that says, let me in the door. So most of the time when I do those kinds of places, um, they know me like tin roof. I perform there like almost every single Friday mm -hmm. or, um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty trustworthy too. <laughs> most of the time I also have a parent <laughs> there. Um, but I don't mind if they want to write like an M on my hand or something. I know they do that in Nashville, especially when I go into certain bars and everything, they just write a little M on my hand. Right. So um, if they did have a problem, uh, not, not, nothing so far. I'm, I'm pretty trustworthy. <laughs> I wouldn't get into any trouble. I would rather be on the stage performing for everyone. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe um, if the M is for Marie, maybe you need to get them to write an A on the other hand. Exactly. That's a good idea. <laughs> I, I love this. Uh, you put on your website because I pulled this up and, and it really fits the billing when it comes to this description. Uh, Alyssa Marie, quote, the nice girl next door, unquote. So I, I, tell me about this and how that came uh, together, because that's kind of a cool, just fresh slogan to kind of go by. And your personality really fits what you put on your website. Tell me about how that came together. <laughs> well, I'm glad you think so. Um, <laughs> when I was 
when I was in preschool, um, I I was I used to be really shy. Like my whole entire like I I don't know when I got out of my shell, but like I am no longer really shy. I mean, I'm kind of like. Sometimes I get those moments, but that's, I think that's just because I'm an only child. But um, when I was younger, someone, we were doing like, when I was in preschool, they were assigning like jobs that people would have. And like, all my friends were getting like doctor or like medical field. And I got assigned the nice, the nice door, <laughs> the nice girl next door. And I was like, you've got to be kidding. So um, ever since then, that like kind of stuck with me because it's like I I I try to be really nice and like I I'm no longer shy, but I guess that's what everybody used to think that I was just gonna be the nice girl next door. So <laughs> hopefully I'll be able to prove everybody wrong someday when I'm not the nice girl next door. <laughs> well, and and to be fair, her website does not say she is the nice girl next door. It says she's known as the nice girl next door. <laughs> so we don't really know the truth. <laughs> I mean, That's to get true. down to it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. So what, what is it also though? Um, and, and I'm sure you are uh, lovely, um, but you have, you've also got a lot of experience with your music now. Um, how do you handle um, I would think that you're probably younger than everybody you perform with all the guys that play with you. How do, um, how does that work with you kind of being the leader, um, you know, to people that have probably, I mean, a lot of them are going to have more experience than you just because you're young. Mm -hmm. Uh, is that difficult or, or how do you, how do you show them, um, how do you guide them the way you want your career to go? Well, most of the time, I'm, I'm never afraid to put my own input, but I also know um, most of the time that I don't know everything. Like, especially when I'm working with my band, the guys are a little older than me. They're actually not too much older than me. Um, but I always just, like, say certain things that I like want or just throw it out there and they're all open to throw things at me too. Cause like we work together and like, I want to hear their input and I would like them to um, hear mine or try it, but um, they're welcome to tell me if I'm wrong also. Cause I know I'm pretty young, but sometimes I try to like um, just throw my ideas out there, especially in band practice. That's, that's the right. big thing that I immediately thought of when you said that was, mm -hmm. um, yeah, because I definitely know, I hear things in my head and I'm like, that it needs to be like a certain way. And I try to explain it the best I can, even with like, even lacking some knowledge, I guess. Well, and that's, and that's what all musicians do, right? Whether, regardless of age, if you're working with someone you've never worked before with, uh, you have to figure out how they roll and how they communicate and what they do. And even though, yes, you're younger than a lot of artists, you've also put out a lot more music than a lot of artists have and you write a lot of your music. So it seems like you really have a good sense of what you want to create, how you want to grow, how you want to represent yourself. Yes. Yeah. So how would, how would you describe uh, kind of what you, uh, what you try to create with your music kind of on the, on the larger scale? Well, I just want to create something that everybody can relate to. I mean, music's the only thing that I feel like every single person in the world like has cuz like spread across like like um different cultures and everything. That's the one thing that everybody can relate to. So, especially like um like writing songs that even just one person can come up to me and say like, "Oh, like I was thinking that last week." <laughs> uh I think that's like really cool or like even just the feeling that you get like after a show um, when you play for people live, like that's the best feeling in the world. So I just try to make everybody feel happy and try to get away from like their problems and stuff. Make us, make us feel something. And that's the thing I like about it too. I like go to live shows. People say, well, you want to see your favorite artists? I said, one of my favorite artists or at least a couple of them. And when I get there, it's like, yep, um, I'll take that drink and make sure it's come over here. We'll sit in this section 
once that concert starts, it's alive, it's good, and all the troubles go out the window. And that's making yeah. somebody feel something important, positive, and uh, relating to that music and putting, I guess, taking a life situation. And sometimes, uh, I hate to say this, but you got to flush it down the toilet. The music is meant to make you feel uh, something and make you feel better. And that's what I what I get um, with a lot of your tunes out there, too. Well, I'll tell you what, I'm going to turn it over to you again here, again, presented by our good friends over at Hank Jr. Productions and also Bangtail Whiskey. Uh, it's Alyssa Marie Kuhn out there across all the digital platforms and get the music now, put it down is the current single. And I'm going to turn it back over to you. Um, I say dealer's choice. I would have my request, but uh, uh, like I said, it's all yours, whatever you want to play. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, I may have heard you say that you looked real good night. I did. So, I, did. <laughs> I will play real good night for you guys. Next. All right, then we'll come back and talk about it. Here we go. Okay. So this is real good night. It's uh, another New, newer single that I have out on all music platforms if you want to check it out. Um, Real Good Night by Alyssa Marie. Here we go. No GPS, turn off your phone. We don't need it on this too late road. What would you say if I got a way to let all the worries go? A full tank of gas, four-wheel drive, we're cruising down I-95. Let's break the rules of this curfew and leave the world in our rear view. Whoa, put your hands up the rooftop window. Just follow them back, nobody knows. We'll be singing every word, our speakers are playing through the radio. Whoa. Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-hosts Kirsty Krause, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune into the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. 
And if you want to catch her this weekend, uh, I advise you to do that. If I was in Florida, I'd probably, I'd definitely show up uh, this coming Friday. Uh, Delray Beach at the uh, Tin Roof there, performing live there. Uh, Saturday night, Wellington at the Piano Bravo, if I said that correctly. And on Sunday, Old Red there in Orlando, uh, November 7th. So be sure to check her out. And if you want those dates, AlyssaMarieCoonMusic.com is the place to go there. If you're in Florida, like Henry is, our good friend there, get presented by Hank Jr. Productions at Bangs Hill Whiskey. Uh, let's break this one down because I, I did like it. It was one of my favorites there when I first uh, was uh, getting to know you and your music a little bit. Uh, tell me about Real Good Night. Well, first of all, thank you. Um, so I always find myself like writing about like boys or like the usual thing <laughs> you're writing about. And so um, at the time I wrote this song, I had just gotten my, well, it's been, it was like a couple months after I got my driver's license in my car. So I just, I, my, I think my favorite, my most favorite thing to do is like drive around listening to the music, listening to music with my mm -hmm. uh, windows down. Cause that's just so fun. Um, and so I wanted to write a song about that and that feeling and just hanging out with your friends, like no phones, no drama, no social media, um, no, like just nothing and just having like a great time listening to music. So that's basically why I wrote that song. And it's just about having a real good night. I love that. I do. Good song. So, okay. So, so let's ask this question just to make sure. Um, you know, you talk about how fun it is to, you know, drive around your car and you got the windows down. So, you know, this is an important question and you'll know why I'm asking. I'm scared. <laughs> He's going to be scared too. I'm like, man. <laughs> um, but before you're out there alone, can you change your own ah. tire? <laughs> Good one. I like it. <laughs> um, no. <laughs> uh oh. That's why I wrote that song. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't know. My dad and I always. Well, my dad always tries to show me, but I feel like I'm always like, I, I never can like, like pay attention. Mm -hmm. Like I yeah. have a problem. <laughs> I just, I guess it's something that I really just don't want to know how to do. Yeah. But I did write that song about not being able to change a tire, which was really <laughs> good because everybody, like everybody, like in my family and my band and my friends, we all make those kind of jokes, like mm -hmm. about like my song titles or like lyrics. So that was very funny that you did that. <laughs> well, and there was a, there was a viral post um, this last week where Luke Bryan pulled over and helped somebody change a tire. I so you've that. always got that going for you. <laughs> I mean, hopefully I'll drive on I-65 and then I'll get a flat tire and Luke Bryan will come out. Yeah, we can, we can hook that up. We can, well, <laughs> we, we can hook the flat tire up. I don't know that we can hook Luke Bryan up, but yeah. we can hook the flat tire up. <laughs> It's okay. I actually would rather not have a podcast. Okay. All right. <laughs> That's why she wrote that song. We talked about there when it comes down to it. Hey, what's it been like to step on the stage and, and open for these names? And, and a couple of these names have been with us here. Uh, one that Jeff and I got to talk to a while back, first part of this year, uh, Tracy Lawrence, who came on the show here and just talked about an illustrious yeah. career celebrating 30 years in country music. You've opened for him. You've also stepped on the stage with, you know, performances such as Lady A and a whole lot of others out there with Darius Rucker and Russell Dickerson, Dirk Bentley, just to name a few. Um, what's that experience been like to open for him and then play some of the same stages that those names have stepped on? Um, so when I I was in eighth grade when I opened for Tracy Lawrence, and I I can I literally can picture like the crowd to this day. It was so awesome. Um that was like so like cool uh also um i also knew like many tracy lawrence songs because like my dad would listen to them and and then when my mom got that uh contact like asking me to open i was like what <laughs> and so um i actually missed my last concert with my chorus for that but i don't think it's something that i regret at all uh loved chorus and everything but um that's just something you can never pass up and that's something i'll always remember um but on the other thing i've played the vip for um lady a and other artists that you just named and that was crazy i just 
did the one for the Jonas Brothers and Kelsey Ballerini, oh, which man. was so awesome. Uh, Kelsey Ballerini is amazing. So are the Jonas Brothers, of course. But um, I really look up to Kelsey Ballerini like we were talking about earlier. So that was really cool mm -hmm. and uh, awesome to be able to do. Accomplished so, a lot. Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, well, no, I was just I was just going to ask because, um, <clears throat> you know, sometimes when you have opportunity to to perform for those people or in front of those people, sometimes you cross paths with them. Sometimes you don't. Sometimes you get to see them sound check. Sometimes you don't. Is there is there anything that you have when you've been around some of those other artists? Is there anything that you've picked up on or learned or seen them do that was like, oh, wow, I never thought about doing that as an artist. I want to remember to do that when I go up, when I keep growing, you know, that's something that I just learned from watching them. Can you think of anything that comes to mind? Um, that's a good question. I mean, I always, I always like think about like that kind of thing. Uh, I'm trying to think, cause there was a lot of things that Kelsey was doing the other day that I was like, wow. Um, I really, I, I really like how she like is is like overly like well not overly like in a this is like the best uh, like it's a compliment. Uh, she's like overly confident and like she knows that like she's just like so awesome. Which well she doesn't maybe she doesn't know it's coming out wrong, but I just think it's like really cool how confident she is and um she definitely is very appreciative of her team and her band and everybody that uh works behind her behind the scenes and she makes that very known which i think is very cool also because a lot of people don't realize how many there how many people are behind that curtain right yeah yeah i mean with all the songs and stuff you've done i mean i'm sure that's i'm sure it's not just you and your mom making things happen no yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go pull a comment here. I love this comment from Tim. It just kind of made me uh, laugh through the last song here. Uh, yeah. Okay. All right. So we'll take applications there. So uh, <laughs> for what Jeff was talking about there, and uh, there you go. So Tim, thanks for sharing that with us and for uh, for tuning in today too. Again, uh, check her out. The latest single, "Put It Down," is across all the platforms. Hey, let's do one more. We'll come back and finish up with a little thing we call rapid fire a series of little funny questions we get to ask and get to know you more on a personal basis. So uh, I'm going to let you choose this one. I've done a couple here and there, plus the latest single. So to wrap it up, you get to choose one more. So. Okay. Uh, well, <laughs> since we were talking about before I'm out there, I guess I'll, I guess I'll do that one. <laughs> All right, here we go. Mm -hmm. Everybody keeps on talking about where they're gonna go when they get out. Four years later, leaving town, they'll graduate and they'll settle down. Tell me what happened to football games. No expectations or bills to pay. I wanna go back to young and free. It's going up, it's killing me, but before I say goodbye to high school, there's some things I need to know that they don't teach you. Like how do I know a good price for gas, how to fix the time when I get a flat, how to change your life up, shake your hand, when the back down and take a stand, when I feel like breaking, falling apart, how do I heal, it's so hard, when I get scared late at night, how do I know I'm gonna be alright, somebody teach me what I need to know, before I'm out there in this big old world. All the time I spent wishing that I didn't have to go to class I never thought it'd be a day I'm just walking through them old hallways Got a lunchroom, sweaty tears Under the bleachers, kissing him Yeah, we all knew that it never lasts But we didn't care what happens after that So before I say goodbye there's some things I need to know that they don't teach you. Like how do I know a good price for gas? How to fix a tire, get a flat? How to change your life up, shake your hand? When I back down and take a stand, when I feel like breaking, falling apart. 
Thank you. The bangtail pour is comprised of a sweet corn mash base. The front has a subtle sweetness and not too sharp. It has notes of a medium char or white oak for a smoky flavor in the middle. And the tail has a super smooth and warm finish. And I will take the applause back from Tim here too. Yes, we'll have a lot of the applause there too, which is great because I love <laughs> the music. And I always have fun making playlists. And I made one for you today that I pulled a lot of songs from that they're out there. It's the beauty of digital out there. There's some pros and cons to it. I like the pros because you can just pull up the uh, playlist out there, no doubt. Uh, good friend David's tuning in all the way from England. We get him a lot of times to uh, tune in for the show here. He says, uh, can Alyssa Marie tell me about the guitar that she uses and how important is the guitar to her? when she's writing and performing. So I love that question that David always asks, and there it is on the screen there, I'm reading it, and of course there it is there. Uh, tell us about the guitar and how important it is to when you're writing and performing. So this is my dream guitar. They actually, I think, uh, don't quote me if I'm wrong, but they just stopped making this guitar. Uh, it's a Taylor A14 CE B-Class Deluxe Edition with the cutout here. Um, I am like obsessed with my guitar. If uh, my dad actually was really sweet and just cleaned it, so that's why I'm showing you all right now. Um, oh, dad, there I, you go. Yeah. <laughs> I'm obsessed. This guitar has been my dream guitar ever. I am very protective over it, only certain people are allowed to touch it. <laughs> but um, I think it's very important when writing, actually, because um, sometimes there's certain songs that I just want to write on this guitar. Obviously, I do write songs on other guitars. I have other guitars that I love too. Um, this is just my pride possession. So I would love to write most of my songs on here. And I love the way this sounds. It's definitely very fitting to my voice and my range because uh, Taylor's are more trouble sounding than bass. So I love that too. Yeah, if I get time, David, one more song, we will do that too. But I got to get into some rapid fire and uh, just enjoy this. All right. So, uh, being from Florida, there's a lot of great country music artists from uh, that great state. Uh, John Anderson, of course. Uh, just if you've ever been out of the Everglades, I love that one too. Just hearing him uh, just kind of melt away his tune. Uh, Easton Corbin, who we've had a chance to talk to here on, on this show just uh, last year. He's going through some album promotions here. Easton, fantastic guy. Uh, when it comes to Florida and I guess the musicians, country singers, uh, what is it about that state? It kind of reminds me a little bit of California because they do produce a lot of great uh, big time country music singers. And speaking of California, John Party, I mean, that's just one to name who, who's been uh, out there too. What is it about Florida country music singers that go off to stardom and, and watch out? You could be next. <laughs> <laughs> um, tell, tell me about that. Like you, you follow Easton Corbin, a little bit of John Anderson, a little bit of kind of some of those Florida country music singers that uh, have gone on just to make it big and you're kind of right there in the next week, because you're very polished for your age. I'm going to say that right now. You, you really are. And, and oh, so. thank you. <laughs> I, mean, I, do, I do follow Easton Corbin, and uh, I know, like, Michael Ray is from Florida. Mm -hmm. He's he's very awesome. I saw him live. Um, I'm kind of, like, blanking on who else is from Florida. The but, Bellamy uh, Brothers. Know, Bellamy oh, Brothers, yeah. Bellamy yeah, Brothers are from yeah. Florida. Oh, yes. Uh, one of my good friends knows them. Um, I, not even just country music. Ariana Grande is from mm -hmm. right on the road. She, uh, yeah, so I love her. <laughs> so I don't know. I think, like, I don't know. I think um, a lot of people, uh, I guess Florida's very big. Well, I, guess, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but um, I, I, I don't know. It's fun down here, too, to perform. And I think, like, a lot of people say when they come do concerts here that Florida is, like, very, uh, mm -hmm. like, like I don't know. I don't know. They're just like into music a lot. Like mm -hmm. uh, all the country music concerts I've been to, everybody's said that to the crowd that Florida always has that vibe and the energy that some other states don't. No yeah. offense. No, <laughs> it, and we're in the South here. I know Jeff you can say that right there. I mean, Nashville's close right in there too as well. And I've never been to one there, but like I say from Texas and Florida, haven't been to those two states and, and love it traveling that anyone I go to, the fans are rambunctious, they're alive, they're ready to go, they enjoy music, they're drinking having a good time. And that's just what it's all about to let loose when you go out there to, uh, to a live show. All right, we'll do two or three more and uh, we may have time for one more song. Uh, tell me about this one. I love this. Cause I just started this one probably about two weeks ago. If you could be on any game show, a contestant on any game show, which one are you choosing? Oh, wow. Um, you know, I, I would like to be on family feud just because of how many like iconic people have been on. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like 
I don't know, like, I know Jojo Siva's, she's, uh, Jojo Siva was on there, mm -hmm. like, Charlie D'Amelio, the D'Amelio family was on there, and, like, I feel like you go on Family Feud and you compete against another, <laughs> I would love to do that, although I don't think that I would be, like, able to answer many questions. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, you've always got to be careful, because you don't want to be the person that says, name a month with... 30 days in it and you say February. Oh no. You know, and then you're <laughs> and then you get 14 million views on YouTube. Wah, wah, wah. Wah, wah, wah. There you go. All right. Uh, favorite food and drink. What are they? Um, my favorite drink is definitely the strawberry acai from Starbucks. And okay. my favorite food is probably pizza there you go all right so if you're ordering one by yourself what toppings to build on that what toppings go on the pizza none uh i would be fine with i'm fine with pepperoni i definitely like don't eat it with pepperoni though i rip the pepperoni off and eat pepperoni. <laughs> <Jeez>. <laughs> it's like my daughter now she's almost 20 months and she's like pizza and it's like the little you gotta rip off the toppings eat them and give her just the plain either the breadsticks with cheese or Play cheese. <laughs> well, so that, but that raises the question because of the way you answered it. Would you rather have a cheese pizza or do you want the pepperoni pizza just so you can get the privilege of pulling the pepperoni <laughs> off? Oh, I, I think I would rather have pepperoni then. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. 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 You're all so weird. So, uh, privilege of pulling. Topics off, only to eat the plain cheese, and and I guess uh, you're like, well, hey, other people in the family would eat the the pepperoni pulled off there in the box or on the napkin or whatever. <laughs> well, and you get to, you get to burn a few extra calories by going through yeah. the trouble of pulling exactly. off the pepperoni. Yeah, <laughs> she avoids the grease because everybody knows pepperoni or anything else on there. It's got it's just it's greasy as can be, no matter where you get it from. All right, uh, before we do, we're gonna have time for one more song. Uh, bucket list vacation. When all this is over, is there a place you're like, man? I'm going to go here to relax. I'm going to go here on just leisure. I don't have to do music. Um, I can just go travel with the family or travel by myself. Where are you going? Hawaii. Great choice. All right, there's enough said right there. <laughs> I don't need to know more on that, too. So, yeah, I uh, <laughs> love that one, too. All right, we'll come back to a couple more. Uh, David, yeah, let's, let's let's do one more here on the show. I'm, I'm in a good mood. It's Thursday, last show of the week. And, of course, so we're back next week with uh, – uh, some more great stuff here on the Backstage Pass. You can put it down. It's out there across all the digital platforms. Uh, I always say your choice, but you put out so much great music. Uh, you want to do one more for us? Sure. All right. Let's do it. Okay. You get to pick whatever you want. <laughs> okay. So this one is an unreleased song uh, that I've been playing out for a little while now. Um, I think I may have played it on a Facebook or Instagram live one time, but this one's called Break It Fast. All right. So here we go. Like a band-aid, get it over with. Time won't make it easier, gotta make it quick. It's been a year and a half, and the hardest part is you can't hold on to a trip. It's been hard, and I don't wanna hurt you. But I have to, I don't wanna drag it out and leave you on. When it's far feeling, it's already gone. It's the off and on of what we had. It's better off than in the past. I can keep plugging, we can keep plugging, but it ain't gonna last. Oh, if I know I'm gonna break your heart, I'm gonna break your heart. Don't want you to hate me, know that I don't hate you. You're not right for me, but there's nothing wrong with you. There's a girl up there who will love you better. She'll keep her promise to stay forever. But now I see that girl just saved me. I don't want to drag it out and leave you on. But it's hard we live. Gone, it's the off and on of what we had. It's better off than the past. I can keep talking, we can 
Go behind the scenes with some of the biggest artists in music today with the Backstage Pass, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. Join Brandon Morrill and his co-host Kirsty Kraus, Jeff McMahon, and Karen Lee Batten as they talk to rising stars and legends about their music careers. Listen to their latest tracks and learn fun facts about the men and women behind the music you love. And be sure to tune in to the Backstage Pass Monday through Friday from 3.30 to 6.30, powered by the SportsGuysPodcast.com. And welcome in to the Backstage Pass. That's why we do what we do here. Alyssa Marie Kuhn on the Backstage Pass. So be sure to check her out if you haven't already. AlyssaMarieKuhnMusic.com. There's three big shows coming up in Florida this weekend. And the single, Put It Down, is out there across all the digital platforms. Again, thanks to Hank Jr. Productions and Bangtail Whiskey for all their uh, support. So definitely, I have enjoyed the visit today. I know we went a little bit over, but I was just enamored by the vocals and the uh, performance. And you're definitely more mature than beyond your years uh musically and the personality and i guess i could i know she's known as the girl next door jeff but if we ever visit florida we'll just have to knock on that door and like have some dinner have jill cook us a meal and just enjoy uh just enjoy the the, the beauty of florida down there where she's living and we Come can really <laughs> which would be great to catch a show uh Alyssa, thanks so much for the time hope you had fun and definitely thanks for um uh, you know spending some time with us and letting us get to know you and the music and uh best of luck in your career continued success going forward thanks for being with us we appreciate it Thank you. Thank you guys so much for having me. I had so much fun. <laughs> no doubt. Henry, yep, come down. We've got to come down to Florida. Maybe we can pull you in there too. And you can do uh, a lot of good things with Hank Jr. production, uh, documenting life's moments through videography, uh, podcasting, and of course, photography out there. Check them out, hankjrproductions.com, bangtail.com. We're off tomorrow, back Monday of next week. Uh, John Ford Coley is going to stop by. And uh, we'll have a couple of more surprises for you, Jeff and I will here on the Backstage Pass. Thanks to the entire team. Uh, we'll see you next week, Monday, for some new episodes. Until then, have a great weekend and happy holidays to everybody out there. We'll see you soon.